birth, birth, birth. Birth, 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 and rebirth. Hey, everybody. Welcome to week seven of DC Comics Rebirth. We are still birthing. Birthing new heroes and villains and stuff. New books. Yep. yep. We're, I would say... I would say this is like wave three of the new books, and then the week after this is wave four, because we're getting like more actual re you know rebirth one shots. Yeah, I don't know. That's the that's where week. I put the wave. That's where I put the wave at. Yeah, probably about that. Um, not a cowbunga yet, but we're getting there. No. So all right, we're gonna start this week off not with a regular like a a rebirth book but a rebirth title and that is new superman number one also known nice. as super dash man super dash man also known as asian superman chinese superman or that other super guy over there in china so depending on what you know what you what you think um this story so at this point we're we're a week or so behind so we're going to go ahead and spoil as much of these as we can and just kind of give you the the gist um we have uh Two, two characters in this, basically. Um, the little guy who's getting beat up by the big guy. And uh, they're, they're kind of the main gist of this. Of this the, there's like the, the little fat kid who is a kid, a child of a rich family who owns, like, uh, is the CEO of this airline. And then the other kid, um, Keenan, who is the bully. He's the bully. And it just so happens a supervillain shows up. And uh, let me see here. I can get a Good shot of the supervillain. There we go. Blue Condor shows up. Kind of looks like Punisher slash Vulture kind of mixture. I don't know. Kind of weird. Anyway, so Keenan um, has a can of soda that he stole from the kid, and he throws it at Blue Condor and knocks him down out of the sky. He drops the kid. He takes off. Um, so then, of course, the you know Blue Condor didn't want anything to do with it. So now Keenan is all of a sudden the hero and he's all over the news and everybody's like, Oh, you're the hero. You're the hero. So these people, some, you know, clandestine group, they want him for whatever this experiment is. So his dad is a mechanic, but he's also like some kind of big conspiracy theorist. Mm. And so he's always talking about this, um, the, um, um, secret, uh, it's a secret government agency called, the Ministry of Self-Reliance. I'm sorry, I had to find it. I couldn't remember. The Ministry of Self-Reliance. It's like this secret group, right? That okay. nobody's ever found out any any stuff on, but he's part of this group that's getting ready to publish. They're getting ready to publish. Well, they've been ready to publish for five years, and it's just kind of the joke that this guy really doesn't have any information on it. So in the end, um, Keenan gets taken uh, or gets you know kind of called in by these folks, and they say, we want to help you. We want to make you something better. And, oh, by the way, we're with the Ministry of Self-Reliance. And he's like, oh, my dad will never believe me. So Big they're going to turn him into uh, a Superman like Superman. And so they have this machine. And they, and there's like this Genesis chamber. And they put him in it. And they zap him with some stuff. And he like explodes. And then they're overheating. And things are flipping out. And he's like, no, no. And then all of a sudden at the end, he comes blasting out of there with a big S on his chest. And it's like uh, he was dreaming about his mom crashing in an airplane, you know, so. So he comes out of there looking like Sunspot. Pretty much um, with an S on his chest. Sunspot. But he's now new Superman. That's what they call him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be called new Superman. So he's actually called new Superman. And I'm sure it probably translates better in Chinese, but, you know. Um, and at the very end of this, he gets... Uh, he gets to meet Batman and the Wonder Woman of China. So, whereas Batman is all one word, Batman's name, in this it's Bat-Man. So we have new Super-Man and Bat-Man and the Wonder Woman of China. And it's mm -hmm. the Wonder-Woman of China. So, yeah, so they've created some other heroes and whatever. So it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's an like interesting created, story. Like, it's like they've created an alternate universe but just in a different country. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure we'll have some crossover with the regular universe mm -hmm. stuff, you know, but yeah, it's, um, yeah. So I don't know that I'll get issue two. I might, I, I probably will just to see what happens, but yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. So next, talk about the Rebirth books. Nightwing. So what do you think about Nightwing? It was a Rebirth book. <laughs> Meaning it's a one shot story that's just kind of getting you going. But there's not going to be a whole lot of substance. It's more or less going to be a summary of everything that's happened over the last few years to get us to this point. So this issue really just gets us Dick Grayson back in the suit at the end. That's really what this whole issue is about. It's putting him back in the suit. Because he's been Grayson the spy, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And what was he before that? Nightwing. He was Nightwing before that? Yeah, that was when he got uh, right before. That was the Forever Evil when he was exposed to the world as Nightwing, and they killed him live on TV or whatever. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. So that's why he was. That's why he was able to go into. um, Oh crap! What is it? Spire? Spiral? Spiral? Spiral. That's why he was able to go into them and be that because everybody in the world thought he was dead. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can tell I'm real excited. Oh, well, yeah. Even, even, I mean, Batman was the only one who knew it was alive. All yeah. the Robins thought he was dead and everything until Robin War when he finally came back. Yeah, so I think this is a big deal for Nightwing fans because Nightwing puts the suit back on at the end. He's like, I'm in a Nightwing suit. I'm back. So, yeah. Good. Pretty much. And, and he, he, was, he was in the, the uh, Batcave when he did that. So apparently Batman only had his old suit with the blue. Yeah, Not the red and black one. Red, the new red. So that's cool. I like the old blue, blue one better. <laughs> it was cooler. So all right. Well, that was. So what would you recommend that one? Um, if you're a big Nightwing fan, yes. If you're looking to jump onto Nightwing, yes. If you're looking at this like it's going to be some big revolution revelation about Nightwing, skip it. <laughs> okay. Well. On the other hand, I think this other rebirth book for the week, which was Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns, is definitely one to pick up if you're looking for some big revelations, if you're looking for a way to jump onto the story, if you're looking for an awesome Hal Jordan story. Um, I, I like both covers, but um, I picked this one up just because. Yeah. Basically, Hal Jordan recreates himself. And that forces himself back into existence, and then he forges his own freaking ring. Yep. From a rock that he made as a construct. <laughs> I was just like, wow. So not only did he make himself, he made his ring, and now he's back. It's really cool. Definitely a, a good book. I, I just thought, you know, whereas in Nightwing, he like he puts on a suit. I'm Nightwing again. But Hal Jordan remade himself. That was the most awesome thing. Kind of like so. Wally, you know, pulling himself out of the true. Speed Force. He needs a little help, but yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was good the way they opened it up to like Hal's just losing himself to um, the, you know, the emotional spectrum, basically. He's like just yeah. kind of fading away into it. And then he um, pulls himself back together, sheer force of will, and reforms himself. It's, it's pretty cool. That was really cool. The other cool stuff that was going on was uh, the Sinestro stuff with his oh, yeah. War World. That's right. That's right. He's got going on. Yeah. Uh, well, we've heard of Parallax. World War before. Right. And he's got Parallax chained up in the basement, basically powering it. So, yep. Yep. pretty crazy. Yeah some, stuff. yeah, some interesting stuff. So, I haven't really followed much of what's happened with Sinestro in the new 52. I know he it was is... around before and he was he was a Green Lantern for a while, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. He originally started off as a Green Lantern. His daughter's a Green Lantern. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like everything, he got seduced by the green or by the yellow. So yeah, pretty cool. They've done some neat stuff with that. I mean, they did. Uh, I think I oh, read yes. the uh, Wrath of the First Lantern storyline. I think that was in the New Fifty Two. Mm. No, the early stuff, the first yeah. couple years, and I really well, liked that storyline. That was pretty neat. I would definitely recommend anybody going back and picking up uh, Sinestro, the Sinestro title. From mm-hmm. the new fifty two, like it started I don't know, maybe two years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a really strong title, really good story, really good art all the way through. It was cool. for a while there, it was definitely I would say all the way till the end of New Fifty Two, it was the best lantern book out. Wow, that's cool. All right. So moving on. Um the other one you didn't get, I guess, Wonder Woman number two out this week or out this for this week. 
Um, this starts year one. So Wonder Woman's really interesting the way they're doing it. It's a weekly book, or it's a, I'm sorry, it's a bi monthly book, mm -hmm. but every other issue is a different storyline. So issue, so one, three, five, seven, nine will be one story. And that's the, the whole idea of Diana trying to find out the truth about who she is and what everything is going on. Whereas issue two, four, six, eight, ten are going to be focused on year one, really the origin story of, of uh, her retelling the origin. So it's really cool. Um, this goes back to Themyscira. It's uh, it has you know at the end the crashing of uh, uh, what's his name, Steve Trevor and his his group uh, crashing on the island, and then the, you know the realization that hey they um, they've been discovered kind of thing. But it's it was pretty good overall. Good, a good story, you know. Greg Rook is right in this. Um, um, I, I liked I, I liked this one. It was pretty cool. So I liked I like going back to an origin and, and kind of retelling of the origin. And Cho was still that, on that one too, right? Uh, you know, I don't think I think he was just doing the variant covers. Um, oh, okay, all right. Scott, all right. somebody Scott did the art. Hang on, let me look at it. Can't remember who the artist is. Uh, Nicholas Scott is the artist. Nicola. Nicola. Frank Cho was doing variant covers for these. So, um, yeah, I don't know all the details about all of that, other than he got kind of mad they were editing his giant butts. I guess that's, I guess. That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to is like yeah. they were saying that his stuff was uh, too risque, even well, though it was nothing compared to people freaking out about the Spider Woman cover. Oh yeah, but th even that. I mean, what was it? Manolo, right? Was mm -hmm. uh, Pablo Manolo? Was that yeah. his name? Uh, so here's a guy. <laughs> We're gonna go back to this. Here's a guy whose art has been heavily featured in Penthouse magazine. Okay, he draws women. He draws women in sexual positions. He draws, you know, women in risque positions. And you you go. Would you do a Spider Woman cover? And he goes, "Oh yeah." Hey, what are you gonna expect to see? Spider Woman in a risque position with a, you know, her butt sticking up, and that's just what he does. So you mm -hmm. go, "I'm offended by that." Well, you stupid idiot! You picked him to do the cover in the first place. What did you expect? He's not gonna draw yeah. like a Smurf, you know? It's hard. It's hard to do anything with Spider Woman with the with the costume she was wearing at that time. Now she's True. changed. It a little bit so you could do some she got pregnant with and had a baby right right but now she's like wearing a jacket and jeans and stuff like that but before her normal costume the one she's had forever it was skin just, tight it, and if you look at it from the front it's an arrow pointing to her crotch true true it's like i'm spider woman yeah so you're talking about <laughs> over sexualizing and over sexualized character right right I know. So this, but this is the same thing. Like it was funny because I was talking with somebody the other day, and you know, was saying the fact that Frank Cho only draws two characters, and it's the two two ladies from Liberty Meadows, Mandy and the other girl. Is mm -hmm. it Mandy? Brandy, Brandy, and the other Brandy. girl, whatever her name is. So those two girls. That's all he draws. So any other woman that he draws is just a variation of those two characters, and they're going to have a big butt. But you can't take a character. Owned by months. DC, and yeah, can't I just can't lie. Um, <laughs> well, all right. So that was an interesting little interlude there. Can, can you hear me? I can, and we're still recording. <sighs> yeah, this is fun. I I love uh, this this tool that we use. It, it's kind of a tool. Um. You give me just a second, I'll either be there or I won't. Okay. We'll still be here. I'm listening to it rain outside. It just started storming. Talking about some rebirth. I think, so next, we're either going to go, we got like three books left. Yeah, right? Yeah, we got three books left. Detective, Action, and The Flash. So, hopefully Aaron will jump back on here in a second and we'll continue this. Um, I would say that we'll probably do The Flash next, because that's the one that I have on top here. The Flash. So this is The Flash issue number two. Yep, two. Cool cover here, what's going on with Mr. Flash and the stuff that's happening in the Central City. 
as we kind of learn at the end of this issue. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he won't. I blame the Democrats. Okay. Just because, you know, um, Democratic National Convention is on tonight, and everybody wants to watch it online, therefore screwing up our connection to the it's internet. Not even, it's not even the big night. It's the first night. That's hilarious. It's just funny stuff. Anyway. It is. Um, so, this was awful. Should we just start over? Nope. We're going to talk about The Flash next, because I've been talking to people about The Flash. Without me? Yep. Okay. Let's talk about The Flash. Let's talk about all the people who dropped Flash after issue two. What? After this I, issue? I have heard several people. I read this book. I dropped it. That's what I've heard. Why? I read this book. I was like, it, it's okay. I'm not super impressed with Flash. You tell I've, me what you think. Well, I just read it as a story. I don't I don't know. I didn't I wasn't up down or anything about it. I was like, "Okay, well, this is where we're going. Let's just power through this issue and see what the next one is." I mean, it was just yeah. a progression of the story that's going on, and I'm sticking with the Flash because I know it's going to have like rebirth repercussion stuff happen in it, you know? Like yeah. this book no, is too I agree. tied in I to agree. drop. Yeah, I agree. I think there's there's some major stuff going to happen. I think people were disappointed with the August situation. I think that there were things that happened there where it's like like they wanted us to care for him and and not care for him, but you know, be be connected to this character who really is like just new, and all of a sudden he's a speedster. Yay! And everybody's a speedster, and it's like. Okay, I, I can kind of get what they're doing in a way. You know, it's it's an interesting concept that uh, maybe the speed force is like out of control and everybody's <laughs> all of a sudden a speedster and something's going on, right? Yeah, we'll I think it's somebody's actually causing it, though. You think so? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. They, they even actually like kind of alluded to that at the end. Did they? I thought... Somebody, somebody's causing it because, yeah, yeah, somebody's doing it because they said something at, at the end and they're like, all right, well, we'll accelerate our plans. And so then you get lightning all over the city. Oh, true, true. Yeah, so yeah. somebody's so causing it. So I think, you know, this is just a storyline to get this series going, you know? Yeah. Especially with the new character, you know, um, what was his name? I forgot his name. August? August. 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 You know, with him... Kind of wanting to be a superhero, kind of not. Like, yeah. you could see that, you know, Barry is going to have his hands full training him. And then, with what we see at the end with more lightning, more speedsters, yeah. Barry's going to be busy. And you have to wonder more speedsters, will they diffuse the speed force and maybe reduce Barry's power because now that force is spread out among all these people? I don't know. And that would also affect Wally, too, then. True, true. I don't yeah, know. We'll have to see what happens. At this point, with Wally and Barry, as as they've spent so much time in the Speed Force, mm -hmm. I I think they should just be completely fully charged all the time, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't I don't want right. to read any stories about oh, there's too many speedsters and it makes them no. slow. No, nope, I ain't got time for that right. one. Let's get down to 198 speedsters and oh, that's X Men. Oh, <laughs> poor X -Men. so uh, let's move on. How about Detective Comics or Batman in Detective Comics number nine thirty six? Really cool cover here as you have uh, uh, like Clayface absorbing Barbara Gordon. Yeah, kind of cool. no, no, no. It's and it's it's, uh, it's um not Barbara. It's Batwoman. No, I'm sorry, Batwoman. You're right. I, I don't know why I said that. Um, very very interesting. Uh, Kane, right? Cassandra Kane. Yeah. No, um, not Cassandra, Cassandra Kane. Kane. Um, Whatever it but, is. I, but I do like this because it's not totally wrong. Like right, most, of the time, right. most of the time, the covers we get have nothing to do with the book itself. Yep. This one actually was pretty dead on, but just not in the way you think. Right, right. It's a very cool story. I mean, we we get a revelation about the colony. No, what's it called? The army. Mm, 
crap. I read this a week and a half ago. I don't remember. Yeah, me too. I know. That's why I had to go back and like brush up. But yeah, it. it's like it's the it's <laughs> Whatever the army is called. Oh crap! Yeah, we get a huge revelation about that. Find out yeah. who it actually is, who made it, yeah. and how closely connected. They yeah, I mean it's Batman. it's a big deal. So this, um, well, and we'll go ahead and talk about it because it's like like yeah, it's like a week and a half ago. Yeah. Um, so you know, Batwoman um, is um, Kate Kane, mm-hmm. right? Um, and she, her father is a military guy, and so she kind of goes to him for help because of everything that's going on. In the meantime, Batman gets crap beat out of him by this army of bat weird people, and uh, so does um, um, everybody. Orphan, right? Yeah, yeah. Orphan gets gets crap beat out of her, and uh, um, so thing. Batwoman's Batwoman's dad shows up, and uh, whatever his name is, you know, Captain Kane, 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 something, something like Pain Kane, Major um, Kane. Major, whatever. <laughs> he shows up and he starts like, so let me tell you about my plan and uh, my army and all this stuff. And he basically drops in all of the uh, the Bat Patrol or whatever they're called, the army yep. of Bat people. Yep. Um, and he said, you know, Batman had a great idea. He just didn't do it right. So we're we're militarizing Batman's idea. We're training people. We're armoring them up. We're sending them in to all these different places to fight, and uh, that's what's going to happen. And whether you like it or not, this is what I'm doing. So, um, yeah. But he he's saying that he did it. He wants her to lead them, right? He wants right. Her to come back. He said he you could bring all the Robins, you know, bring Clayface, even bring everybody. You come yep. in, you lead them. This will be great. This is what I want. Right. And uh, really, really, what he wants at this point is access to the back computer. Yep. So he gets in there and they're hacking in and all of a sudden, uh, um, uh, who is it? Damien? Tim. Tim. Is it Tim? Okay. Yeah. Tim shuts everything down. Um, and then that's where we get this scene with Clayface rolling them up in a ball and getting them out of there. So that's where you get your cover. It's pretty cool. Yep. That was a really cool scene. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a cool version or a cool use of Clayface that we haven't seen, you know? Yeah. It's very neat. And then, you know, oh, basically, basically tells her dad, she says, I trusted you. I brought you here to show you the kind of leader I've become. Now you're going to have to learn the hard way. So pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I, I like this story. I like where it's going. I was unsure with the first couple issues, just, just what I was going to, you know, if I was really going to like it or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so far it's been, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm torn between which one I like better between Detective and actual Batman because mm-hmm. they're two totally different books, completely yep. different directions that they're going and things like that. Yep. Um, yep. But I'm, I'm 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 liking them both. Like I don't have any complaints about either one. I'm just one of I want to see the crossover. Though. Not sure yet. I, I want to see the crossover. I don't I don't feel like there's any connection between Detective and the Bat books. The Bat, well, the Batman book. There isn't right now because no. he's obviously not captured in Batman. Right. And the same thing with Superman and our next book that we're going to talk about, Action Comics. There's not really a crossover here either, which I don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, Action Comics 959 was out. And I love the Doomsday cover. You know, Doomsday is yep. awesome. Um, if you happen to like pop figures, there's a new Doomsday pop figure that is a convention special. That was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive, and now it's also available at GameStop for like twenty five bucks. Um, but I skipped that one. Yeah, um, so basically, we have pre New Fifty Two Superman duking it out with Doomsday, and uh, Lois and Jonathan kind of coping with that whole thing in this book. Um, Luther getting the crap beat out of him, as, while both of them are just trying to you know team up against Doomsday, mm-hmm. and he takes. I mean. The, the whole thing with this book is the end where he where Superman just takes him down into the sewer just to blast and blast and blast him with the heat vision and Doomsday reaches over and grabs a pipe and goes chunk and Superman has a second to think gas line <laughs> and mm-hmm. boom that whole section of Metropolis is just gone yep. um, so you know cool in a way the way things kind of play out because who comes up out of that pit not Superman. 
So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the storyline. Um, Luther, you know, once he got out of the fight, he was able to use the mother box and regenerate his, his, um, armor and basically yeah. be ready for the fight again. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really strange. Cause we have this Clark Kent character who we don't know what his deal is. Um, no idea. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's, Jimmy, it's, Jimmy's you know, like, come on, you're Superman. Go do something. And he's like, no, I'm just Clark. Right. Right. So who is he really? That's what we want to know. I mean, he's more than Clark Kent. He has to be. And if he's Clark Kent and that other Superman was just Superman with, you know, were there two different characters, Clark Kent and then that Superman who was just never Clark Kent? But I, I think he was Clark Kent too, wasn't he? Pre or New 52 Superman? New 52 Superman. He yeah, had a, yeah, he he, had a he was both. He did both. Yeah. But that's what I, I'm thinking that this is New 52 Superman. And because of all, like, his depowered and kryptonite power and you know just up and down on the power scale not having anything that when he died the only thing was left that was clark so that somehow came back i don't know that's kind of cool i mean in a in a weird you know superman blue superman red kind of way right like superman three right 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 (laughs) separated yeah i'm gonna fight myself in the drunk superman that's right good superman bad superman Mm. Um, I, I hope it's something like that so that he knows that he used to be Superman or something like that. And it's not just yeah, like random yeah. like Clark clone. But yeah, because he really acts. I mean, he doesn't have any powers. Yeah, at least uh-huh. he doesn't. He hasn't shown any yet. So we'll see. He's got yeah. he got beat around a little bit there in that last issue. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm liking this. I really I've always liked action comics. It's always been one of my one of my more favorite Superman books. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely going to hang on to that. Yeah, and it's Stan uh, Jurgens, so. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a few more issues before I start dropping stuff. Um, I'm going to, like I said, carry everyone through issue five. So I've got three more issues of Wonder Woman. I may carry this through issue six just so I get three issues of each regular oh, story. story. Yep. Yeah. Um, Flash, I'm going to give it a couple more issues. So we'll go three more issues. New Superman, I'm at least going to get issue two to see how that plays out. Uh, and then Rebirth and uh, Hal Jordan, uh, I'll I'll definitely pick up. So um, overall, pretty good week. Uh, yeah, I like these books. Um, worth picking up as an extension of the new Rebirth universe. Um, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, we do want to apologize for the fact that the Democratic National Convention interrupted our broadcast so rudely. How dare they? But that's right. We'll just we'll get them by not voting for Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right, That'll everybody. I'm I'm voting yeah. for uh, Brewster from Brewster Brewster's Millions. millions. <laughs> None of the above. Vote no, just vote no. None of the above. That's right. Yep, that was a good movie. They don't make movies don't like know. that anymore. No, they don't. So, all right, everybody, leave us some comments, like, share, subscribe. Check out our website, comicbook.com. New comment, there are new comments, new stuff up there every day. It really is uh, some great stuff coming. Um, some game reviews that are going to be starting soon. I have uh, a whole bunch of uh, Dice Master stuff that I'm going to be start, start doing reviews on. Um, I'm, I'm working on the first article of that now, kind of a, a how-to, how to play, and then we'll do some reviews of each of the sets and uh, try to get some of that content out over the next few weeks. So stuff to look forward to when you like DC and Marvel games. Um, Yay. Yeah. So, and, of course, stay tuned for other great shows. We have unboxings. We have the next uh, rebirth show here. Will be in a couple days, and you know other other stuff that we like to get together and talk about. Nice. <laughs> All right. It's, it's storming. I have a dog in my lap now. Oh yeah. So, well, at least he's not clawing your bare leg, trying to climb your leg and get in your face. And yeah, that was my cat the last episode we did. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Go read more comics. Yep. Have a good one.